was whether or not these women were over age. And once um, it was determined that they were of age when they met him, we faced a host of issues. And so, like Tim said, three years ago when they came in my office, uh, after he called me, you know, I first started to strategize, how can I help? Because legally there weren't too many options. Um, but we had to do was destroy the narrative that's been surrounding this individual and many cases like this, that these are women that no one cares for, that these are women that no one will fight for. And so we took a um, outside the box approach and we started to destroy the narrative. We had to convince men and women across the country to believe what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that baby needs to get her ass kicked. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check her motherfucking ass. Okay. That's well. when I pulled her mama to the side. We was in that goddamn room. And I told her mama, I said, you need to check your daughter. I, I got four hours of motherfucking audio tape and video tape. You need to check that bitch and put her where she belongs. Because her ass is like a loose cannon right now. Now people eat up in boxes when they motherfucking ass like a loose cannon. Yeah, she all over the place. The mama can't control that little bitch. Well, maybe she all over the place because she lying. When it comes down to faith, I have... I'm skeptical about faith. I don't... I don't know. That bitch blind. I can let you listen to four hours of motherfucking tape. That bitch mama told her to go back and get some more motherfucking proof. I got that shit on motherfucking video and audio. I just trying to hold that shit because my daughter's in a situation. I got that bitch saying that on goddamn tape, video and audio. You can see her goddamn face saying this shit. That's crazy as hell. But I don't, I'm not meant to like that. I, don't, I just want my daughter out this shit. I don't want to get involved in that old dumb shit. That's between her and our kids. But when you start threatening my daughter, we got a whole nother motherfucking ball game. I'm not that nigga to be fucked with. And no, we can go to a, a professional level or we can go to the hood level. Whatever way you want to take it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I am. So Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. A very talented young man. <laughs> I am handcuffed like a lot of you mother I'm handcuffed by my destiny. It's too late. They should have did this 30 years ago. When her mother found out and that her mother, he actually stayed at their home in Detroit and her mother uh, actually was sexually attracted to him as well. And he said when Aaliyah would go to sleep that he would, uh, This now this is what he said. He said that he would go in the living room and him and her would do sexual acts on the couch while Aaliyah was sleeping in the bedroom. It's too late. <laughs> I 
I want to send a message to the enablers of Mr. Kelly, to the agents and the managers and the attorneys and the others who stood idly by and looked the other way and turned a blind eye while teenage girls were sexually assaulted for over two decades. I will not rest until each of you is brought to justice. <laughs> testimony but as real knows where everything is when i say the tape she knows who's who she knows where the bank accounts are where the money is she knows who's who's using who not seen what we've been trying to show you that you've been brainwashed but once she watched that documentary and she read the emails that i sent over to her uh that he was sending to joycelyn telling joycelyn the same things that he told her um, hiding other tapes for Azrael, just like uh, London on the Tracks mom was doing, Cheryl, I forgot her last name, Cheryl Mack or whatever. Um, and so I'm trying to tell you without telling you too much, because like I said, this is a federal case. And I've even helped out uh, the feds with all the information that I've been given. So I was working with the uh, department, was it the Department of State? Uh, Homeland Security, one of them damn please. Homeland Security, my lawyers were, uh, to hand them over everything uh, that we had received a clear point that I've made from day one is how people look over how all these individuals are so anxious to tell all these people's stories. And then we have all this propaganda plastered over all of these platforms and these quote unquote enablers transform themselves into victims and accusers. And everybody want to tiptoe around the fact that some of these people are obviously lying, but they don't have a problem with the misconduct and all the bullshit that's going to free R. Kelly. All of these co-conspirators that teamed up against Robert Kelly thought they would use these platforms for their own agendas. And as a result of this media war against Robert Kelly, people with common sense have made one simple point, that these individuals are violating a man's right. And if you believe the accusations against him, which we've heard on these platforms, why would it take all of this nonsense to make their case? Now, we heard the idle threats that all these quote unquote enablers would be prosecuted, but we've seen absolutely nothing. 
We saw all the misconduct and secret meetings and behind-the-scenes conversations with shady individuals. And then we see people coming to these platforms trying to solidify some of these stories and bypass the facts when it comes to certain individuals. Like, take this star witness from the first trial. So many have already concluded is a liar. How can you pick parts of their stories to make true and avoid talking about the extortion at hand? How can you avoid talking about prosecuting all these people if you think these stories are so true? Now, the most obvious red flag was how these people keep talking about this alleged victim, R.L., when back in the day it was a laughing matter. Nobody talks about if this allegation is true, how many people have re-traumatized her with their ideas and speculations. Think about all those people who have reached out to these individuals trying to play nice and get certain information just to put all this stuff on these platforms to reveal to us the origins of all of these stories. I know one thing. If people are still going to hold on to these stories, I just want to see all these key players on the stand to testify to their roles. I don't want to hear no anonymous this when all of these people came public in order to perpetrate their lies. But even with all these people talking about they saw this tape, they know this and that, they skip around how it just came out, even today as it did in the past, that these tapes have been altered and manufactured. Yet we don't see prosecution across the board. We see them trying to flip the narrative and say Robert Kelly obstructed justice, paid off these witnesses, paid off these people to scout these tapes. Never mind he was sued for actually not paying for the tapes. I can't make this shit up. At this point, I can't even take serious the individuals in denial talking about they believe he's guilty of something but want him to have a fair trial and bypass all this corruption we see and have heard be uncovered when it comes to all these cases at hand. <laughs> less than a year 10 months later around thanksgiving um i got i heard that there was this videotape on the streets showing kelly having sexual relations with this uh young woman of 14 or 15 years we had heard that there had been a relationship and we had tried to do some reporting on this woman we had talked to some of her relatives we had talked to her family no one wanted to talk to us and then one day i'm at home uh i worked at home because she can't sit around and play loud music in the Sun-Times offices any more than we can here at BEZ, which is why we're in these editing booth cubicles doing mm -hmm. this, right? Um, I got a call that said, go to your mailbox, click. Uh, hung up, and, and there in the mailbox was a manila envelope with nothing on it and a videotape inside uh, that showed uh, Kelly having uh, sexual relations with an underage woman. certainly appeared to be that. Now, I've heard so many people give their speculations on why these women are acting now. Well, it's funny they want to bypass all these individuals, I believe, are coercing and intimidating them to go along with all of these lies. The first red flag I saw was JP when she clearly said she was expected to testify even though she was in this indictment but didn't know if she was scheduled or not. So think about all these times they've said RL is expected to testify. RL is doing this and that. And people want to wait and see if this actually happens before being misled by a lot of janky people with a lot of hidden agendas. Now, clearly watching them rewrite these accusations in these indictments and bypass all these reportings from these individuals giving other people stories, I find it very comical when people won't even read the indictments or attempt to give reasonable and unbiased commentary based on the fact that we clearly see a lot of janky business going on in all of these cases with these people getting caught up in a lot of scandal.
What's sad is that we could also watch the same government use individuals from these very platforms in order to keep their lives going. After all, do you really only think Angel Cruel is the only person that should be under the line of fire for misconduct? Now I gave him R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how he got R. Kelly's jail records. Ask him how I got the, e the emails between Azrael and R. Kelly. So you mean to tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about? The article state that the other person was in trouble. It did not. It did not. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. You think we don't know? And I'm not saying that they can't pull no shit. But what I'm saying is I'm talking about the article at hand. There was a reason why the article didn't say what it said. And for people to make all these assumptions and, and oh boy, to be a lawyer, you should know. If the fans got something, they ain't going to announce it. They already got it. And, and if they're going to do something with it, they're going to do something with it. Ain't going to be no reporter letting people know ahead of time what's going on. When you hear fan investigation, everybody know that. Guess what? You hear after they've made arrests, okay? You hear after that. State's attorney is calling the allegations against R. Kelly in a lifetime docuseries deeply disturbing, and she is asking any victims related to these allegations to come forward. Um, what I will say is, is that if we are going to take these allegations seriously, it requires this isn't one of those situations where it's just forensics. We need actual witnesses and victims uh, to have the courage to tell their stories. This news comes as sources say the entertainer is being criminally investigated in Georgia. The investigation was launched over the past few days and is directly connected to the docuseries. R. Kelly has denied all the allegations against him. So let's hypothetically say you didn't see Surviving R. Kelly. You missed all the media coverage. You missed all these people on these social media platforms giving all this inside information. Let's say you miss people trying to classify the same victim as a trainer, as a pet, as an enabler. All these people who have came out with allegations be caught up in lies. Meanwhile, I hear few conversations about all these individuals behind the scenes, all these handlers that were supposed to be equally prosecuted as this whole case fell apart on these social media platforms and people bypass all the red flags I pointed out long ago that revealed to me just how creative these people are willing to get in order to garner these convictions against Robert Kelly. So, yes, I did have sex with uh, Bubba as well. No, we did not have a threesome, but me and Bubba had an, another relationship outside of Rob. Something good.